Hi everybody, and welcome back. As you can see, we're over in Microsoft Excel world now. And I've put together a quick spreadsheet, which I'll give you the link to download this if you're interested in playing with it yourself. I'll put it either in the comments down here, or I'll put it in the comments on the YouTube page itself. But as you can see, I've put together a quick spreadsheet with all the variables we talked about on the last slide. I've got the coach for each game, the number of points earned, goals scored, goals allowed, expected goals, and expected goals allowed, XGA. Uh, first eight games are Brendan Rodgers. The rest of them, Jurgen Klopp. Uh, the XG values, I got these all from a variety of public sources. The XG values come from Paul Riley or at Football Fact Man on Twitter. Um, he gives us a great public resource to find all these sorts of data, so check him out, and I'll give you the link to his public dashboard as well. So all we're going to do is, like we said in the last slide, compare the means of these two groups, of the Brendan Rodgers group and the Jurgen Klopp group for each variable. A couple ways to do that in Excel. Um, first, you have to start your epic music, because we're, what we're about to do is very epic. So we're going to highlight all the Brendan Rodgers points. And as you can see down here at the very bottom, it shows the average is 1.5 points per game. Highlight the Jurgen Klopp cells. 1.44 points per game. So the eyeball test here tells us those two are pretty similar and actually Liverpool got more points under Brendan Rodgers. Um, there's a bunch of small sample size disclaimers that need to go on here but for now we're just going to focus on what's going on. The other way to do it is to click in the cell you want to. I created a couple test cells here and it's got all the headers for the same ones we have right here. We've got Brendan Rodgers, Jurgen Klopp, and then we're going to test it for the cell. So, type in equals average parenthesis, and you highlight the cells for the Brendan Rogers games and your parentheses. Hit enter, and there you go. There's your 1.5 we saw a minute ago. Do the same thing for Jurgen Klopp. We highlight all the Jurgen Klopp games, hit enter, and there you go, 1.44. So, points per game about the same and actually slightly better under Brendan Rodgers. Liverpool hasn't improved from what we can see so far. Now a kind of cool thing you can do is instead of typing that in, which you can type that in for all the rest of these cells if you wanted to and it worked just fine. Or if you highlight both of these cells, you see that little black box right there in the corner? It's very epic. You can tell by the music's getting more epic. You click that box and you scroll over and it completes that for all the other cells. So goals scored per game, looks like we're looking better under Jurgen Klopp, scoring about 1.7 goals per game, compared to only one for Brendan Rodgers. Not that good. The offense has clearly improved under Jurgen Klopp. Uh, the goals allowed, though, it's gotten worse under Klopp. They're giving up 1.4 points per game, or goals per game, versus 1.25 goals per game. Not so good. Expected goals, just about the same. Expected goals allowed, a few more goals under... Um, Jurgen Klopp. Eyeball test tells me Liverpool's gotten a little bit better, but really not much under most of our key metrics here. The last thing we're going to do is that difference of means test. And all you're going to do is click on this cell right here, hit equals T test, parenthesis, highlight the Brendan Rodgers cells, comma, highlight the Jurgen Klopp cells, comma, two tailed test, you always do a two tailed test. And the type, we're going to type in 2, because it's a 2-sample equal variance type. Don't worry about that. It's almost always going to be 2, with a few exceptions of paired t-tests. But you can do 2. Again, click that box in the right corner. Highlight them all. Highlight them all. And you're looking for small numbers here. This is basically... I'm going to oversimplify for a minute. The percentage that they're of the same. Percentage likelihood that they're the same. I'm oversimplifying for the purposes of this, but we'll go with that. You're looking for small numbers here, anything less than 0 .05. And as you can tell, all these numbers here are fairly big. This means we can't distinguish between Brendan Rodgers and Jurgen Klopp. If we can't distinguish between the two of them, then we can't say with any certainty that things have gotten better under Jurgen Klopp. So our first hypothesis test, done. This is it. This is how simple it is. You collect some data, you type in the formulas, and if you click on that, you can see it's, that's the formula right there. You click on this, you see that formula again. Um, if you want to write it down or type it in your own Excel spreadsheet, I'll let you pause it right here. But there you go. 
this is all there is to it. Um, you've done your first test. That was easy, right? I mean, that was pretty simple to do. It was pretty exciting. It was pretty simple. You've answered the question that Liverpool's form has not improved this season under Jurgen Klopp. That's pretty exciting. Um, so there you go. There's your first test. I'm going to jump back into PowerPoint world, and we will finish up this lesson. So as you can see from sad Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool has not improved under his leadership. Um, quick disclaimer for all the Liverpool fans out there, and it's an important disclaimer, but you know one that I probably should be said, is that this doesn't mean they won't improve under Jurgen Klopp. This doesn't mean he's not a great manager. This doesn't mean anything about the future of Liverpool. Um, this means that this current season, their form has not improved. Um, they're playing basically the same as they were under Brendan Rodgers. Slightly better on goals scored, slightly worse on goals allowed. Expected goals are about the same. Expected goals allowed are actually a little bit worse. Um, they're about the same team. What will Klopp do after a couple transfer windows? What will he do when he has a chance to remake the squad? All these sorts of things. This is not to say they won't improve. So please, 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 please don't flood my mentions with, but I don't care. The point is we're doing a hypothesis test here, and we're looking at an important question. Has Liverpool improved under Jurgen Klopp? And sorry, sad Jurgen, you have not improved Liverpool's squad so far. We know that because we did a difference of means test on several important metrics. Pretty exciting stuff, honestly. Maybe not if you're a Liverpool fan, but in general, pretty exciting stuff. So you did it. You tested your first hypothesis, or at least you watched me test your first hypothesis. Your question, is Liverpool better under Jurgen Klopp? Your hypothesis, Liverpool is better under Jurgen Klopp. The methods you used were comparing means of several variables. That's it. You have successfully done analytics. That's all there is to it. All you have to do now is put together a couple pretty graphs, tweet about it a bunch of times, and you'll be done. Um, this is really exciting stuff here. Um, that's hopefully this was simple hopefully you saw wow this was easy i could do it i did something interesting i did something simple that's all there is to this the math can get a little bit more complicated if you want it to but really this is it um so great job on your first hypothesis test a couple more thoughts and then we will end this video getting ready for the next set where we create our own expected goals model which i'm super excited about before we do that though there's more um, we did the basic test using Excel. Um, I'm going to do a second set of videos, and for all my videos I'm going to do sort of, this was the entry level I want to understand analytics and maybe do a couple basic tests. I'm also going to do a technical version, I'm going to call it, where I did, I did air quotes under the webcams you couldn't see, but trust me, there's air quotes there. A technical version where we do these tests in the statistical software R, and if you don't care about that, don't worry about it. It's all sort of... Um, for people who want to become maybe a little bit more advanced, I'm going to give you the opportunity to learn a couple more things. We're going to do some t-testing in R, which is basically the same as doing it in Excel. I'm going to give an intro to ggplot, which is a super powerful data visualization tool in R. Super easy, super powerful. Um, I, I'll teach it to you really quickly and easily, give you enough just to sort of be dangerous with the whole thing. And I'm also going to show you the importance of violin plots as opposed to box plots. I don't like box and whisker plots, violin plots or the wave of the future. Um, here's what they look like. And as you can see right here on the left side, I looked at, you know, did they score the same amount of points? Those plots look roughly the same. Um, the expected goals, again, look roughly the same. The shape's are different, but the distribution's about the same. Uh, Klopp had a couple big games, the Aston Villa game, um, as I record this a week or so ago. Um, was a big one for them, and they had another game where they had a huge expected goals number. Um, other than that, the number is somewhere between 0 and 2, just like it was under Brendan Rodgers. Um, these plots were super easy to create. Again, done with the data we had right there. You'll be able to do it. I actually recommend everyone watches this R video at least, just so you can see how easy it is. Um, and if you don't want to go further in the R videos and the machine learning, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, but let me recommend you watch those videos um, as soon as I put them up. So thank you all again for watching. Um, just a reminder, I am Soccer Metric on Twitter. You should follow me if you're not already. 
Uh, please share these videos, retweet me, um, because then I get more credit for hits, which makes me absolutely zero money, but it makes me feel good about life. Um, share them yourself. I always appreciate when people share things under their own name. Um, more people probably see it in that case. Uh, but please share this as widely as you can. I've spent a lot of time doing these videos. This one took me several tries um, and a lot of time writing it up, doing the t-tests. Um, so please, please, please take the time to share these with a friend. Um, give me feedback. Um, I'm very curious to hear why you all are watching these videos, why you took this class, what you hope to learn. And I'm happy to. We've got, I think, one, maybe two more lessons. I think two more lessons actually after this in the planned group and then I'm going to do whatever you all want me to do slash whatever strikes me as important that day so I'd love to hear your feedback on these um, hit me up on at soccer metric respond to the tweets where I post them it's probably the best way to get at me and life is good and like I said please share these as widely as possible I'm only doing this so a lot of people see it so hopefully this will get as broad an audience as possible thank you all very much and I'm looking forward to the bonus extras on this one or maybe I'll just see you on the expected goals model have a good afternoon, night, morning, whatever time it is, and thank you very much.